Welcome to this video. My name is Stefanie Juchmes and I explain today how you can start using DynaPDF. But first, what is DynaPDF? With DynaPDF you can get functionalities, for example, to create, edit, merge, initialize or sign PDF files with FileMaker. With DynaPDF you can, for example, write an invoice for your customer in which you integrate a barcode with payment information and attach always the same terms and conditions to the PDF document. This invoice can also be converted to PDFA for archiving purposes. If you want to use functions of DynaPDF and FileMaker, you need a suitable license for DynaPDF and a MBS plugin license. There are four different licenses for DynaPDF. Which license you need depends strongly on which functions you plan to use. For example, if you only want to insert links in a new PDF document, a starter license is sufficient. If you also want to add a page to an existing PDF document, you need a light license. If you want to read images from existing PDF files or import single PDF pages from another PDF document, you need a professional license. With the additional PDFA converter license, you get the possibility to convert already existing documents from PDF to PDFA. All MBS Dyna PDF licenses can be used for Sojo, C, C++, C Sharp, Delphi, Lazarus, PHP, Weeby, WeBA, and WeBee.net. More information about which license you need you find on this table on our website. If you are not sure which license you need, you can contact us. We will advise you on the selection. The MBS functions for FileMaker that you can use in combination with DynaPDF can be found on the MonkeyBread software web page in the component DynaPDF. For each function there is a description if you click on that function. Let's have a look at the use of the functions by a simple example. We want to create a new PDF document and write a text in this document. We write a script and use the MBS functions as usual. We use the functions with a set variable or a set field script step. This has the advantage that we can read the return of the function. Let's think about what we need in our script. We need to create a new PDF document. And then we need functions that enter the text into the document. Afterwards, it will be saved in a container. For a new PDF environment, we need to use the function DynaPDF New. We want to add a page to the document. So we call DynaPDF append page for the PDF environment.
Then we want to write our text. But before we write our text, we want to define how it should look like. Therefore, we call the function setFont. In this function, we define the font. the style and the size of the font in the parameters. Additionally, we can define if the font should be embedded and the font encoding. We want to write our text in the font area. The style should be bold italic. The specification for bold is a 2 and for italic 1. If we want to use both styles, we add the numbers and enter 3. The font size is set to 50. In our case, we embedded the font and want Unicode encoding. Now we want to use the DynaPDF white text function to white the text. In the parameters, we first define where the text should be placed. We position it 50 pixels from the border at the bottom of the page and 50 pixels from the left side. In another parameter, we define the text we want to write and it is Hello World. Next, we write the PDF into a container. We cannot directly save the PDF environment because this value would only be a reference number and not a PDF. Therefore, we use the DynaPDF save function. With set field. DynaPDF environments have a special characteristic of reserving memory space. We have reserved our memory space by calling the function DynaPDF new. Now we no longer need the reference to this working environment. We have to free our memory. To do this, we call the DynaPDF release function. If we don't release the working environment, it remains and our memory is stuck. If we let our project run like this, we would not get the desired result. Our container field would be only contain an error message. This is because we have to initialize DynaPDF for the first time. We have to write a script that initializes DynaPDF. Because this script is always the same for all DynaPDF users, with a few adjustments, we copy it from one of the example projects that come with the MBS plugin. Init DynaPDF. Let's take a closer look at this script. The script is designed to run on all executable platforms, Windows and Mac client and server. For this reason, we find many if and else if conditions in this script. We have to connect to our library file. 
To do this, we first have to locate the right file. Depending on whether we use Windows or Mac, we need different library files. The Windows file have the ending DLL and the Mac file have the ending DLib. The comments help you to find your way along the script. We see here, for example, that a decision was made with the solution run on a server. If so, the next step is to decide whether it is a Windows or a Mac based server. Depending on that, the file will be searched in the correct path. At this point, you can also change the path to the file for your belongings. By default, the file is searched in the specified path. For a desktop solution, for example, it looks by default in the same folder where the database is located. If we have a desktop version running on Windows, it is important to know which DynaPDF library we need, because there is a difference between 32 and 64-bit systems. Therefore, you have to make sure which DLL file you are referenced to or that you store the correct DLL file. Since FileMaker 19 is now 64-bit only, you only need the 64-bit version there. The library files can be found in the example folder DynaPDF. In our example, we don't need to adjust the path. Instead, we copy the dulab file into the same folder where our database is located. After we have the path to the library file in the variable path, we can specify our license key in an other variable. You will get this key with your order from us by email. If no license key is given, we are in demo mode. This means you can test the DynaPDF function completely, but a watermark will be printed on every PDF page. To remove this watermark, you must enter a valid DynaPDF license key. Please keep your license key private. Now we have to call this script in our original script only if it is necessary. It is enough to call the script once, but I recommend to check in every script where you use the DynaPDF functions to test if DynaPDF is already initialized. And if necessary, you can call the script. It is only a single extra query, which can save you a lot of trouble. So you can put the following lines in each script you use DynaPDF functions. Now we can run it and we see our result that we want. Now I would like to build a larger example with you. We want to import an existing PDF file, copy protect images with a logo and add page numbers to the pages. I've already prepared a file in which the required fields are already created. We have a container in which the original file is stored, a container with the logo that should be drawn over the images, and we have a container in which we can save our finished PDF file. The only thing that we want to do is to write the script. The task can be divided in partial aspects. At first, we take care of the already known initialization. Then we import the already existing PDF into the working environment. 
add page numbers to each page. Afterwards, we extract each image. Draw the logo on it and exchange it with the old image. Finally, we save the PDF in a container. Let's start with the initialization. We already know this. I have copied the script that we need for the initialization before, and then we can call this initialization in our main script. Now we come to the import. We can import a document that is in a container or as a file that we can access. We always import the document into an empty PDF environment. So we create a new environment. Now we want to import a document from a container. To do this, we first need to open the PDF using the Dyna PDF open PDF from container function. We can now use the Dyna PDF import PDF file function to import all pages into the PDF environment. If we want to define what elements exactly are imported from this file, for example, whether you want to import annotations or not, you can define it in the import flags. Because we want to import all elements, we don't need to do that. Now we come to the page numbers. We go with a loop over all pages and write the page number at a specified position. To do this, we must first find out how many pages the document has. For this, we use the Dyna PDF get page count function. This gives us the total number of pages in the PDF environment. We also need an index that tells us the current page number. We want to start at 1, so the variable gets the value 1. By default, the orientation of the coordinates in DynaPDF environments is in the lower left corner. That means the higher the coordinates values becomes in the epsilon axis. We go up the page. For humans, this is more difficult to imagine. Therefore, we can set the coordinate origin with DynaPDF set page chords and the parameter top down at the upper left corner. The assignment of the coordinates is important for the positioning of the page numbers.
Now we need the height and the width of the page. To position our page number, we write these values outside the loop because we have a PDF document for testing which has the same page size on every page. If this is different in your project, it is advisable to query this value inside the loop. Now let's go to the loop. We write the page number in the loop on the current page and then go to the next one. We do this until the current page number is larger than the page number in the PDF environment. So this is our abort criterion. To write a text with the DynaPDF write f text x function, which I will introduce to you in a moment, the page on which we want to write must be editable. For this we use the edit page function from DynaPDF. In the parameters we set the page we want to edit. Now we set the fonts we want to write with. Our document text was written in the font Helvetica. That's why we set the same font for the page number so that it fits nicely together. In addition we also specified the font size here. Helvetica is one of the standard PDF fonts, so every PDF viewer can show this font without embedding it. Now we can write the page number on the page. We have the DynaPDF write f text x function for this. The position of the text box is defined by the upper left corner. We would like to have the possibility to write page numbers as long as possible. So we want to keep the whole text with. We position our upper left corner 50 pixels from the left border and 50 pixels from the lower border. Remember we have the coordinate origin in the upper left corner of the page. Now we define the size of the text box. The width of the text box should be equal to the width of the page with a 50 pixels left and right margin. For this reason we enter width minus 100. 
the height of the text box should be 30 pixels. We have to specify the text alignment too. This is very important for a large text box. If we would specify a left text alignment, our page number would be in the lower left corner. If we specify centered, then we see our page number in the middle. But because we want to see our page number in the lower right corner, we select the right text alignment. Finally, we enter the text that we want to write on. This cannot only be a page number. You can compose any text. For example, you could give a PDF a serial number or a user-specified name. But in this case, we want to write our page number. Because we write the page number, we can close the page editing for this page. Now we come to the part where we place our logo on all images in the PDF. We first determine how many images there are in the PDF document. For this we use the DynaPDF get image count function. We also define a variable index with the initial value 0. These informations are important for our loop that we run over all images. We load every single image into memory. Draw the logo on it. And then we put it in place of the old image in the PDF environment. This may take some time while executing the script depending on the image size in the PDF. With the DynaPDF get image function, we can get additional information besides the container value of the image. The information we want to receive for an image, we specify in the parameters. Which image we address is defined by the index that starts counting at zero.
We only want to draw our logo on the image if the image is big enough. This avoids that we have to draw a logo on every small icon in the PDF. I decide that for this example the image should be more than twice as wide as the original logo in the container. Therefore, I first determine the size of the logo outside the loop, because it does not change. Then rewrite the suitable if condition. When we load the image as container value in the variable, we can decide in which format we want to have the image. In this case, I chose PNG. In the parameters, we also specify a file name and the format. Now we want to draw the logo on the picture. For this we need help from functions from another topic of the MBS FileMaker plugin, Graphic Magic. Graphic Magic offers us the possibility to edit image with different functions, use it with composition of images, the use of effects or change the color space. If we create or edit images with graphic magic, they must be available as reference. With the import function graphic magic new from container, we load the image we have in our variable as container value into the main memory. We get the reference number as return. We do the same with the logo in the container. But you cannot only use graphic magic to edit images which are available as container value, but you can also load image files with other function into the main memory. We think about how big our logos should be printed on the image. It would be practical to place a logo with a one-third image width in the middle of the image. To do this, we scale the logo with the scale function. The scale function accepts a parameter of the form high by width. High and width are separated by an x. We have to calculate these values first and then put them together as text. So we divide the width by 3. We cut the decimal points to avoid rounding errors and then we put the text together in a variable.
This variable is then passed to the scale function, together with the reference number of the logo. Then we can draw the logo onto the image with the composite function. In the parameters, we first specify the reference number of the image and then the reference number of the logo to be drawn over it. In addition, we specify that the logo should be positioned in the center of the image. The finished image is then written back to the variable picture as container value using the function write to PNG container. The reference numbers from the images must be free from memory with Graphic Magic Image release. With the DynaPDF function replace image, we now replace the original image located at the index with the new image. When the loop has replaced each image with a new one, we can save the PDF document to the container with the save function and release the PDF environment. We have a little error here because we forgot a semicolon. We save it and then we can run it. We can see that the logo is printed on each picture. 
but DynaPDF functions can do much more. What they can do, you can read in the documentation or you can see from the examples that are included in the plugin download. Here you can find a lot of examples that shows you the possibilities. Print several PDF pages on one PDF page. Find a text passage and mark it. Create and read forms. Convert documents to PDFA. Or extract an image. Or a text from a document. These and many more examples can be found in the examples. Take a look at it. If you have any questions or would like to purchase a license, you can contact us. I hope you enjoy the video and we will meet again in one of the next videos or at a conference. I wish you a lot of fun with DynaPDF functionalities.